Yo, what's up everyone? It is Gad here, finally with episode 17 after about a year and a half and a highly requested video. And in this one, what we're going to be doing is giving these enemies some virtual eyes so they can see the player with a certain look distance and a field of view. And obviously, so they get blocked by walls and things like that. And I'll give you a quick demonstration of what it looks like. So you can see this guy can see me in this peripheral vision, but we can obviously change the FOV to whatever you want it to be. But you see everything like that. And also when we kill them, obviously they're going to stop looking for us because they are dead. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so to get started, I've put everything back to how it was. And on the enemy, we have only one in the scene, just for debugging purposes. If you want to put things in the log, it's going to be easier to find and fix bugs if we only have one enemy debugging in the console. And so I've added a script called the Detection State Manager. And if you've watched the other videos, you're going to know that we're going to have a base state and some states for it. And in the future episodes, we're going to have a detection meter. So we're not doing that in this episode. We're just going to focus on the player or the en <laughs> the enemy being able to see the player. So in here, we're going to have a public ball. And we're making it public for when we have the states. And this I'm going to call player scene. And then I'm just going to return false for now because we're going to need some variables. So the first two will be serialized field and floats for the look distance. And then also for the field of view. And so what I'm going to do is set this equal to 30 for the distance and the field of view equal to 120, which will mean he'll be able to look 60 degrees each side, basically. And then next, what we're going to want to have is a serialized field and the transform, which will be for the enemy eyes. And then another transform here which is going to be the player head. So let's go ahead and set these up in Unity before we forget. All right, so we'll start off with the enemy. If we click on here, we see enemy eyes, no transform. And I've already created the position. So if I open this up here and find where the head is, we can see the head. You just want to create an empty game object on the head and then I've called it eyes and you just want to make sure that it's outside of the collider of the enemy's head. So we can go to the enemy now and then drag and drop that in there. Okay, so now for the player head position, it's going to be more or less the same where we go to the head, wherever that is, create an empty and then what we want to do is have a sphere collider here and then obviously change it the the radius and the center to match up with your model and this is just for now until we have a ragdoll on this player and the reason we don't have one yet is because we can't die <laughs> so for now this is good enough and we're going to change it when we have the enemy shooting us so but we have nowhere to drag this in. So I have a game manager here from episode 16.9, which I'm going to open up. And you can create and copy all this code down now if you want before you watch 16.9. And if you've already watched 16.9, then you're all good. <laughs> so we're going to have a public, a pubic, no, <laughs> a public transform. And then this is going to be player head. So what we can now do is wait for this to compile. There we go. And now what we can do is just drag in that head position 
into the player head in the game manager. And so now in the enemy detection state manager, we have the transform for the player head. We are going to need a reference to the game manager. So I'm just going to call that game manager and then get this in the start. So game manager is equal to except it's game manager with a lowercase <laughs> equal to find objects of type game manager and ideally this should be a singleton but i'm creating a series on game architecture and design patterns which will cover that and then so if you would like after that video is released you can go ahead and create this as a singleton but for now, we don't need to. We just want to add one into every scene. So we can get the player head now by just saying player head equals game manager dot player head. All right, so that is actually everything we need set up for the player scene function. So instead of returning false, what we're going to do is first of all, create an if statement. And this is if the vector three dot distance between the enemy eyes dot position and the player head dot position. And we want to say if it is greater than the look distance, so we can just return false straight away and not have to run any other code in this. So now we've done that, I'm just going to add a little comment. There we go, so it just says calculate the distance from the enemy to the player. Because I hardly write comments and I probably should do that a lot more. <laughs> so now what we need to do next is check if we are in the field of view. And for that we need to get the direction to the player and then compare that to the forward vector of the enemy and then we can get an angle which we can then compare with our field of view variable up the top. And basically if it's more than the field of view, we will return false, the same as what we've done for the distance. But first of all, we will need to get the direction. So vector three direction to player is going to equal to, and in brackets here, what we need to have is the player head dot position and then minus the enemy eyes dot position dot normalized. There we go, it's doing it all for me today. So now we have the direction to the player, we can calculate the angle between the enemy and the player. So we're going to create a float here called angle to player. Set that equal to vector three dot angle. And what we're going to want to have in here is the enemy eyes but the parent, so the dot parent dot forward. There we go, and the direction to player. And the reason we're make using the parent will become apparent very soon. So now we have the angle to the player, we can go ahead and check if we're in the field of view. So if angle to player is greater than, and we need some brackets here, field of view divided by two and that is because when you're forward it's zero if you go to the right it's going to be 30 if you're 30 degrees obviously and to the left it will still be 30 so we divide it by two so when we have this 120 here it's going to be 60 each side so there we go I don't know why it's done that so we just return false here if it's greater than the field of view. So we can then carry on. And now it will make sense why we have used the enemy eyes parents forward to get the angle to the player, because what we're going to do to the enemy eyes is dot look at, and we are going to look at the player head dot position. So that way for the ray it's always going to be perfectly looking at the player's head where we want it so now we can finally do the ray cast to the player 
So we're going to create a variable here, raycast hit called hit. So we can out the information. And so we're going to write the if statement, if physics dot raycast from the origin position, which is going to be the enemy eyes dot position, the direction enemy eyes dot forward, because obviously it's looking at the player's head in the forward direction. We're going to out the hit and we are going to have a max distance which is the look distance. So there we go, we can open up these brackets. So in here, first of all, what we're gonna do is check if the hit.transform is equal to null, then we're gonna return false, which means we haven't actually hit anything. And if we were to continue without this line and we didn't hit anything, the program will crash. So now if you've hit something, we can check if the hit.transform.name is the same as the player head dot root dot name. Oh, uh, there we go. And then what we can do is then debug dot draw line and then so it's just going to be from the eye enemy eyes dot position to the hit dot point and we are going to give it a color and this is going to be color dot green because it means that it's working <laughs> if i can type there we go color dot green and then finally we're going to return true here and then after this we just need to return false by default so now we have this written what i'm going to do is run it in the fixed update and then so this way the ray casts if you have a really high frame rate um they will start detecting you sooner than if you have a slow frame rate so in the fixed update that means that you will be detected at the same time, no matter what PC you got. So I'm just going to write if player seen. So if the player is seen, what we can do debug dot log and write something like gotcha. And then else we can <laughs> debug dot log where he go there we go so that should be everything so now when we press play we can see if i know what i'm doing or not after this has completed but yeah for the next video what i want you to do is write in the comments what you want to see next and if you see a comment that you like for the next video go ahead and like that one and then we're just going to have a poll basically in the comments. So you can see here, we go past the field of view. Where'd he go? Gotcha. We go past the wall. Where'd he go? And then we run far, far away. There we go. It's past the distance. Where'd he go? So that's all working now. We can go ahead and if it lets me select these players and there you go you can see they're all putting green beams towards me so that's working perfectly okay so that's everything for this video i've just tried to make it short and sweet as an introduction back into this series because i know it took me a little while to kind of figure out what was going on and what i've done <laughs> for all the previous episodes so go ahead and watch 16.9 if you haven't already is that is going to be very helpful for the future and yeah let me know what you want to see in the next videos and like comment subscribe all that good stuff hit the bell and i'll see you on the next one sweet